Welcome to the Blade Attack Channel's 70th edition and second year of the Space Attack Rewind. We are reviewing the milestones that occurred on each day in the week of October 11th to October 17th in space exploration, science, and technology. October 11th, 1968, Apollo 7 lifted on a Saturn 1B from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station's Launch Complex 34 on this date. It was the first manned Apollo flight, the previous Apollo 1 planned manual flight, having been canceled after the death of the crew. Cunningham, Izell, and Shira were the three astronauts on board. The eight-day Apollo 7 mission was the shakedown cruise of the Apollo Command Module, ensuring that both crew and spacecraft performed well in low Earth orbit before being sent out on a lunar mission. October 14th, the third day of the mission, witnessed the first live television broadcast from a manned American spacecraft. The mission was a success, and the crew splashed down uneventfully. The next Apollo mission, 8, would conduct a circumnavigation of the moon. October 12, 1928, the Iron Lung was used by its first patient, a young girl at the Children's Hospital in Boston on this date. It was an artificial respirator that enabled her to breathe despite being paralyzed by polio. The machine was invented by a young Harvard doctor, Philip Drinker, becoming the first widely used device of its kind. From the neck down, the patient's body lay in a sealed galvanized iron box. The 3 by 7 foot, 700 pound apparatus was powered by two household vacuum cleaners. As air was pumped out of the metal box, the patient's lungs drew in air, which was expelled as the air pump cycle next increased pressure, in a cycle to mimic a normal breathing rate. Polio vaccination programs have virtually eradicated new cases of poliomyelitis in the developed world. Because of this, and the development of modern ventilators, and widespread use of tracheal intubation and tracheotomy, the iron lung has mostly disappeared from modern medicine. In 1959, there were 1,200 people using tank respirators in the United States, but by 2004, there were less than four dozen, and 10 years later, there were only 10 people left with an iron lung. October 13th, 1884, Greenwich, Britain was adopted as the Universal Meridian on this date. At the behest of the U.S. President Chester Arthur, 41 delegates from 25 nations met in Washington, D.C. for the International Meridian Conference. Arthur proposed that a single world meridian passing through the principal transit instrument at the observatory at Greenwich be adopted and that all longitude would be calculated both east and west from this meridian up to 180 degrees. Before this, almost every town in the world kept its own local time. There were no national or international conventions which set how time should be measured, or when the day would begin and end, or what length an hour might be. When the railway and communication networks expanded in the 1850s and 1860s, there needed to be an international time standard. The logic behind using Greenwich as the meridian was that in the late 19th century, 72% of the world's commerce depended on sea charts, which used the town as the prime meridian. The Greenwich meridian was officially adopted as the prime by 22 of the 25 nations present at the conference. San Domingo voted against the resolution and France and Brazil abstained. Greenwich lies on the River Thames, a few miles from central London. Want to know how to navigate our channel content? We refer to tech documentary segments as episodes. Coverage of current events in space exploration, science, and technology are labeled as shorts. Space and tech history are documented in an anthology called Milestones. Gameplay recordings can be discovered on the Belated Tech Gaming channel in videos called Walkthroughs and Side Missions. Reviews of tools and equipment hail from the Tool Crib and reviews of small electronics and appliances arrive by way of the Radio Shed. Looking for a specific video on our channel that we may have mentioned in one of our other videos? Links to those episodes can be found in the description section below. Also, we have begun labeling our video titles with numbers, such as 
M105 for Milestones 105 or S49 for Short 49, so viewers can perform a title search. Finally, you can peruse our entire 300 plus video library by looking at our playlists, which conveniently sort videos by subject. October 14, 1947. Chuck Yeager, a World War II fighter pilot, became the first human to fly faster than the speed of sound on this date, breaking through the sound barrier in a rocket-powered Bell XS-1 airplane over Murak Dry Lake, California. The four rocket motors of this tiny needle-nosed research craft could gulp an entire supply of fuel in two and a half minutes. To save on fuel, the X-1 was carried aloft by a B-29 and then released. At 37,000 feet, the X-1 flew well, but began to buffet as it approached the sound barrier. When an airplane travels at the speed of sound, the air particles ahead are compressed into an invisible wall of thick air. Others flying with less powerful engines could not push through this wall, with hazardous and deadly results. Jaeger succeeded. Jaeger was unique in that he enlisted as a private and ascended to the rank of Brigadier General during his career a rarity in the U.S. Army since the Civil War era. He retired in 1975. He was memorialized in the movie The Right Stuff, but in truth, his reputation needed no burnishing. He was universally recognized as an incredible pilot. At the age of 74, he broke the sound barrier in an F-15D fighter jet as pilot, and he did it again at the age of 89 as co-pilot of an F-15E. We covered Jaeger's death last year at the age of 97 in Milestones 48, and we covered the Bell X-1 program in Milestones 44. October 15, 1997, NASA's Cassini spacecraft carrying the ESA's Huygens probe was launched from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station on a Titan IV-B rocket from Launch Complex 40 on this date. Its mission objective was to orbit Saturn, collecting data on the giant planet itself, its magnetosphere, rings, and moons. After a seven-year journey on June 30, 2004, Cassini entered orbit around Saturn. On its way, it had made flybys of Venus on April 26, 1998, and Jupiter on December 30th of 2000. Cassini released the Huygens probe on December 24th of 2004, which landed on the moon Titan three weeks later. After two productive extensions, the Cassini mission was terminated on September 15th, 2017, and the probe was directed into Saturn so that it would burn up in Saturn's atmosphere. Have you agreed with our choices, or do you think there are other events in space and tech history that are better? Go ahead and share with us by dropping a comment below. If you have suggestions for a space and tech milestone, let us know. We'll credit events we pick for future videos to those viewers that post them. We hope you have been enjoying our content. Have we earned your subscription to our channel? If yes, and you have not taken the opportunity to subscribe, please take a moment to do so now and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. We want to continue delivering great content to you. You can always unsubscribe and subscribing is free. October 16th, 1982. Halley's Comet was observed on its 30th recorded visit to Earth on this date first detected using the 200-inch Hale Telescope at the Mount Palomar Observatory by a team of astronomers led by David Jewett and G. Edward Danielson. They found the comet beyond the orbit of Saturn, about 11 AU, 1.6 billion kilometers from the Sun. It became visible to the naked eye in 1986. The first written record of the comet was made in 468 to 466 BC in Greece and China. While 50 million times fainter than the faintest objects our eyes can see, they needed to use not only the largest American telescope, but also special electronic equipment developed for the Hubble Space Telescope. In 1705, 
Halley used Newton's theories to compute the orbit and correctly predicted the return of this comet about every 76 years. After his death, for correctly predicting its reappearance, it was named after Halley. It is expected to come within visual range of Earth again in 2061. October 17, 2016, the SS Allen Poindexter, orbital ATK's Cygnus OA-5 freighter, was launched on an Antares 230 rocket from Wallop Island's Launch Complex Zero on this date. The Poindexter reached the ISS on October 23rd. It carried 2,345 kilograms of pressurized cargo and externally four Spire Global Lemur 2 CubeSats. The freighter was unberthed from the ISS Unity module on November 21st and returned to orbit, releasing the CubeSats after reaching its target altitude. Cygnus was deorbited on November 27th, re-entering over the South Pacific and burning up in the atmosphere. The Cygnus spacecraft was named after the shuttle astronaut and naval aviator who was part of the STS-122 and STS-131 crews. Poindexter died in a watercraft accident in 2012 at age 51 and was at that time a Navy captain and Dean of Students at the Naval Postgraduate School. On October 4, 2021, Arizona Space Tourism Company Worldview announced it was developing a balloon-delivered capsule that will be carried to altitudes of about 19 miles. Called the Explorer Space Capsule, the craft will host eight passengers at $50,000 a seat and two crew for flights lasting 6 to 12 hours, giving people an over-the-horizon view of Earth close to that seen from space on suborbital flights. The company expects the flights to begin in 2024. The nonprofit organization Space for Humanity which offers spaceflight experiences for those who cannot afford tickets, has committed to purchasing all the seats on the inaugural flight. Rival space balloon tourism company Space Perspective, founded by two former Worldview executives, Jane Pointer and Tabor McCallum, has already made its first uncrewed test flight with its craft and said it was starting to sell tickets at $125,000 per person for flights also targeted for 2024. We covered Space Perspective in... Milestones 115. We hope you enjoyed this 70th episode of Blade of Tech Space and Tech Rewind. If so, click that like button. Don't forget to subscribe or just stay in touch by following us on our microblogging accounts, which are listed below as well as in the community feed for this channel. We announce all new videos on those outlets. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed and Minds page, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed, and where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching. <laughs>